Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. We're looking at the Yuzhan Vong War today. I know a lot of you guys like this type of content, so I've went ahead and made an entire playlist with most of my Yuzhan Vong videos, but if you want even more content and really want to get into it, we're actually doing a read-through of the new Jedi Order series on my podcast, Tapcalf Transmissions, which I'll link to down below. A lot of today's content, most of it in fact, actually comes from the novel Jedi Eclipse. One of the really high points in this book for me, despite how dark and disturbing it is, is that we see what the Yuzhan Vong invasion is like from the perspective of refugees who are simply trying to survive. One of the most interesting things about the Yuzhan Vong is that unlike, say, the Empire, their strategies aren't predictable and often aren't dictated by military sense or logic. Instead, the early stages of the Yuzhan Vong War especially saw the Vong motivated to, above all else, really cause fear for those within the Star Wars galaxy. I guess in a way that's not dissimilar to the Empire and, say, the Tarkin Doctrine, but the Vong take it to the next level. For example, going back to Jedi Eclipse, early on in that book, we learn that the Vong's attack strategy has been specifically designed to try to hunt down refugees and survivors from fallen worlds. That's part of the reason why trying to be on the run from the invaders would be so terrifying. You know that if they're at a planet, it's probably not for a tactical advantage. They're not going to simply occupy the capital city and let the survivors do what they will. No. They're first going to want to Vong form the planet, which is basically them terraforming it to suit their needs, then they're going to want to abduct people and either bring them to a sacred place for sacrifices or put them through horrible torture in order to try to make them see the light of the Vong religion. Another terrifying aspect of the early Yuzhan Vong War was the fact that the New Republic was so heavily outgunned. The New Republic was also dedicated to protecting, above all else, certain key planets in the core, like Kua or Bothui, to the point where they were more than willing to sacrifice other other worlds rather than to move their fleets out of place. Now, things get a little bit better, especially when they begin coordinating more directly with other factions like the Empire and the Hapens. But the planet Jindin, for example, is essentially left to try to fend for itself, and obviously that's not possible. That means that the New Republic was willing to let billions and billions of people die in order to protect trillions. So we have essentially a hyper-aggressive enemy, which the New Republic cannot stop everywhere, an enemy which which is hunting down refugees and innocents. But to make things worse, the technology and the tactics of the Vong were also terrible. Everyone knows Cern Padal. In that case, the Yuzhan Vong used a Dovin Basil, essentially a gravity manipulating biot, to pull Cern Padal's moon into its surface, causing, well, apocalyptic damage. And while that was obviously an overt action, the Yuzhan Vong were able to accomplish a lot of this through subterfuge. Early on in the war, pretty much every major attack by the the Yuzhan Vong had integrated agents among the civilians. They would do everything from espionage and information passing to the Vong to trying to start riots to more overt actions like attempted assassinations. The Vong actually had unique technology which allowed them to camouflage themselves, but I think their biots, which was their word for their living technology, also brought out a primal fear in a lot of beings. Most of their technologies are invasive, they have no regard for pain as the Yuzhan Vong revere pain, and they're just disturbing and frightening on, I think, a fundamental level. The Battle of Jindin saw one of the Yuzhan Vong's most terrifying creatures in my opinion, and for this I'm just going to read directly from the the book. Parading out of sunrise like the harbingers of a new and dreadful dawn came a legion of enormous bladder-like creatures, supported on six stubbly legs and equipped with arrays of flexible proboscises from which gust streams of gelatinous flame. Yet another example of the Empire's genetically engineered monstrosities, the 30 meter tall fire breathers didn't so much as march as loll over the terrain, like loosely tethered lighter than air balloons, incinerating everyone and everything in their path. These beasts, by the way, were not only dangerous flame-throwing monstrosities, but also emitted an aerosol, which drastically affected the potency of the New Republic's lasers. Other terrifying enemies include the Dreadworm, which could chew through space stations and consume people as whole, either for food or as prisoners, or one of my favorite, the Voxen, the Jedi Hunters, which I've actually detailed in a prior video, I'll link up above. 
If you read the Battle of Jindin, I really think you get a good idea of what the beginning and mid stages of the war was like. There's just not enough ships to save everyone who needs to be saved. Leia's trying to help save as many refugees as she can. Babies are being passed to people who can make it on board. And it really ends with the small flotilla of refugee ships flying away from the planet as the shipyards explode and fall to the surface. Just a really, really impactful moment in my opinion. But guys, just a short one for today. Going to continue my coverage of the Yuzhan Vong War, as I have for the past several years. But again, if you want to follow along the reread live, we're only about five books in. Click the link down in the description, Tap Calf Transmissions. A new episode will be coming out Monday, or you can watch live every Thursday on YouTube. You can find the audio version on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever else. Till next time, though, guys, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.